time to say goodbye to one of the staples of Double B Garage. Soon I will be selling my Jeep Wrangler JL, and hopefully someone else gets to enjoy it as much as I did. But here are the top 10 reasons why I'm selling my Jeep Wrangler. Starting off with number 10 is the features of this Wrangler. Not a lot of features, but a lot more than the previous generation. They redid this entire vehicle from the ground up, adding a lot of technology and features. But still, in 2022, not much has changed since the 2018 debut of the Wrangler. Starting with the gauge cluster, we have an analog tack and speedo, but the screen in the middle does give you some digital functions. I would like to see an all-digital display in a Wrangler. That hasn't happened yet, so some lacking points there. Moving over to the screen, this is the largest screen offered in the Wrangler. It's an 8.4-inch touchscreen. Lots of buttons down here, especially for a vehicle in the modern era. It does have parity between the controls, such as the heated seat and steering wheel. So if you're driving down the road and you need to turn on something like that, you don't have to do a touchscreen. A lot of manufacturers are moving to touchscreen controls, which is a little annoying if you are used to that physical button. Now, Windows is a big problem for me. They're in the middle for some reason. So you have your window switches in the middle and not on your door, which means you control your windows from the center of your dash, not on the door. Now, someone once said, Oh, that's because if you take your doors off, your window controls can still be in the middle. Well, if you don't have doors, what windows do you need to put down? I think the real reason is trying to reduce the amount of electronics that go to the door that are removable. So uh, Jeep stuck with this center stack of window controls. Now, the one thing that bothers me is you do have auto on the front two only windows. So if you press down the window goes down. You can't go up with auto. You have to manually hold to put the window up. And the back windows aren't auto at all. I would have liked to have seen all windows be auto up and down. You know, just a modern feature that we've come accustomed to. Some of the other features that I really don't care for, you have a big grab bar here. Nothing else up here. I have these aftermarket grab bars, but nothing like the Bronco. Uh, no airbags over here. This door is basically a piece of sheet metal between you and another vehicle. Um, there's not much safety on these sides, which allows the doors to be removable. So I would like to see Jeep take the Bronco approach and getting some more safety features on the side, especially side airbags and more of a structural door. Staying in the vehicle at number nine, let's talk about quality. Well, this is the Sahara trim. It has a little bit more nice leather touches than some of the lower trims. Still not good quality here. I mean, we have a hard plastic that's wrapped in leather on the dash here. But as you can see in here, there's a lot of creakiness going on. The doors are all plastic. Now, they are light doors, so they can't be removed. But everything else in this interior is plastic. While it looks kind of soft, leathery, it's not. Uh, we have some rubber here. A lot of just rugged kind of touches. And you may be saying, well, it's a Wrangler. It's an off-road vehicle. I can't imagine most people are buying this vehicle for off-road use. There's not a lot of people that off-road or that are willing to take a forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 vehicle off-road. I think Jeep needs to step up the game of interior quality like you see with the other Jeep lines like the Grand Cherokee or even the Ram 1500 has a much better interior. Up to number eight is resale value. Because of the high prices of used cars right now, I'm able to get a pretty good return on the value of this vehicle. On top of that, Jeep Wranglers usually hold their value pretty well over the years. So between the used car market going through the roof and the great resale value of my Wrangler, I'm not losing a whole lot over what I paid new for this four years ago. It's almost a no-brainer to trade in on something newer that is in warranty 
and may not have any mechanical problems coming soon, which you get out of a four-year low-mileage vehicle. I'm not sure what the Jeep Wrangler used car bubble will be like. I do see a lot of Wranglers sitting on lots, used lots specifically. We'll see if there ends up being an excessive amount of Jeep Wranglers around, but hopefully someone buys this Wrangler and enjoys it as much as I do. But I'm ready to move on and getting the most bang for my buck. Or the most buck for my bang. Lucky number seven, power. 3.6 liter V6 naturally aspirated gasoline engine. Not the best for a heavy Jeep Wrangler with four wheel drive. Pair that with a six speed manual transmission and it's sluggish. First two gears, pretty good. Third and fourth, not so bad. Fifth and sixth, I'd never touch them. Uh, you need to go up a hill, you got to shift down into fourth. Sometimes third, if it's steep. So that's where you're getting not enough power. Now in the 2.0 turbo, which I haven't driven, that may change. Can't get a six-speed manual, or any manual for that matter, in any other engine configuration in the Jeep Wrangler. We'll see if in the future anything changes on that end, but for now, the 3.6 liter might have seen its last day and is underpowered in almost every configuration that you can get it, especially with a manual. Number six is all about the tops. Now, a lot of people choose one top and they stick with it. Uh, whereas I like the hard top in the winter because of the snow protection. And I don't have to mess with the flapping soft top and move it around. And there's no reason I'm going to put it down in the winter. So in the summer, I switch to a soft top. And that allows me to put it down whenever I want, put it back up when it rains. Even that is a pain. Uh, there's a process to even putting down the soft top. You have to remove the three windows, the sides and the rear, before you can even put it down. You can flip it back, that they call a sunrider position, that allows you to basically have an open moonroof. Same thing with this hardtop. You can take the front two panels out, enjoy that open air feeling, which I do a lot in the spring and fall months when I'm running the hardtop, but it's nice enough out that I can do that. So the reason I'm listing this as something I don't like there needs to be a better solution. Now, Jeep has come out with a power one-touch roof that can go back with a touch of a button, but you don't get that open air feeling that you do when you remove this. If you remove this hard top completely, it's one of the best looking experiences and the best feeling of having that open air. I'm not gonna miss it though. I will take a traditional sunroof and windows down any day over messing with these tops all year long. Number five is the paint. While I love the color of this mojito green metallic paint, the quality is just not there. Between the body color green and the top matte black, there's a lot of issues from bubbling, undercoat issues, clear coat issues, and just general easy to be scratched. So on the side here, I'm getting a lot of bubbling, specifically around these hinges where there's bare metal underneath. It seems like they didn't do the right treatments to prevent some of that corrosion coming through on the paint. While Jeep may replace this, it will never look the same as a continuous coat of paint on this body, being that there's a bubbling issue on Wranglers, which again, isn't new, but it's something that I didn't think I would have to deal with that is currently plaguing the hinges and other areas of my Jeep. Outside of the bubbling issue, there's a lot of inconsistencies in the paint in general. Now this may be because it's a limited color run. They did this for barely over one model year and you can, you can tell. I do have to say that this is a very unique color. I hope they bring it back someday and I will miss the color, but the quality of the paint and the bubbling, it's only gonna get worse from here. You can see close up that these bubbling issues are widespread on every door the vehicle. If left untreated, it will probably break through the paint. Now there's a corrosion warranty with this Jeep, but I'm not going to have to deal with that. That will be someone else's problem. Now in at number four is the widely loved, widely hated, controversial, cult-like wave, the Jeep wave. This is where you are peer pressured into waving at every Jeep Wrangler that you ever come across. Now you got to remember, Jeep Wrangler one of the most popular vehicles in production in the United States. And it's been around for, I don't know, 45 years. So there's a lot of Wranglers. 
there are some days I drive down the road and I give, you know, 15 waves on a 15 minute drive. Now I'm not one to go against the Jeep rules, but there are times where I will not wave because I just waved at three Jeeps, you know, two minutes ago. You're not getting a wave today. So that's one reason I'm getting rid of the Wrangler is I can't stand the Jeep wave. Yeah, it's a cool little club. Started from the motorcycles. Let's steal. But every vehicle has a wave. I had a WRX. They had a wave. Let's get over the wave. Everyone's nice. Let's get along. We don't need to wave at everyone that has a car that looks kind of just like yours. So no more of this. Don't put the wave on your mirror. Uh, I've seen people make little cardboard cutouts so they don't have to wave. They can just, you know, hey, flip, flip this thing up on the steering wheel. Wave. Yeah. I'm calling for the end of the Jeep wave. And since that probably won't work, I'm just going to sell my Jeep. Number three, gas mileage. This 3.6 liter V6, a little underpowered and naturally aspirated. So it's not going to get the best gas mileage. Pair that with my six-speed manual transmission, and it's sucking gas. I average about 16 miles per gallon on a good day. I've gotten 14 in the winter. Put in four-wheel drive, and you're dropping to 12. I, I know Jeep has other engines available. When I bought this, the 2.0 turbo wasn't available. Slight increase in gas mileage. The three-liter turbo diesel. Diesel price is just kicks that out. I don't even think they're making that one anymore. The 4x E hybrid is an option but it's not really what you want out of a plug-in Jeep. I'm looking for an all-electric Jeep in the future. So until then, gas mileage is going to be my top reason why I'm getting rid of the Wrangler. And I don't think it's a suitable vehicle in today's gas prices. So if you're looking for a Wrangler, keep in mind that the gas mileage is very bad. On to number two is the interior space. The leg room, the hip room. Not so much the headroom, but as you can see, I'm six foot five and my knee is up against the dash in this Jeep. Not much leg room otherwise. Headroom is pretty nice, but the interior is skinny and small. And the dash being 90 degrees helps a little bit because not so much is jutting out at you. But as you can see, my seat is all the way back and my knees are touching. My knees are touching the steering wheel and the dash. And when you're driving a stick, it's not the easiest thing to maneuver around. So I'm driving at a normal speed, around 45 miles per hour, which is the current speed limit. You can hear just how loud it is in this interior. I'm having to shout and hopefully you can still hear me. I attribute this to the hard top without a headliner, without your acoustic glass, basically without your normal car accessories that allow your interior to be quiet. As we ramp up speed here, you'll be able to hear how much of a white noise sound you get on this interior. Even without larger tires and a performance exhaust, there's still a lot of road noise and a lot of wind noise with this Jeep Wrangler. Now we're hitting about 60 miles per hour and you can hear that wind noise ramp up, especially as I go over different surfaces on the road. Some people may not mind the loud road noise of the Wrangler, but if you're on a long road trip at highway speeds, it can get to you very fast. Additionally, if you're trying to listen to a podcast or music or some audiobook, something with spoken word, you have to turn up that volume so loud that your ears hurt because the volume has to overshadow the road noise and the wind noise. This isn't a new problem with the Wrangler. It's certainly by design that there's so much noise because of the convertibility and the shape and the rake of the windshield. After four years of driving with all this road noise and having another vehicle with about half as much road noise and wind noise, I'm ready to give it up. It's not something I'm going to miss 100%. So in addition to the road noise, we're now around 70 miles per hour, so it's getting up there pretty loud. We now have weather. So if it's raining, sleeting, hailing, snowing, you're going to get extra noise. 
and that's going to be in every car, but it's amplified in this plastic box that I feel like I'm in in the Wrangler. Hopefully this translates to the recording of how loud it actually is to be in here and drive. If you're having a conversation with someone sitting beside you, you have to yell to get your point across or for them to even hear you. Potholes, loud, everything's loud. If you throw on 35 inch tires on this thing, you're gonna go deaf. 35 inch tires plus 80 miles per hour equals ears bleeding. Not recommended. Well, there you have it. The top 10 reasons why I'm selling my Jeep Wrangler. You may think that they're nitpicks, but it's my car, my rules. And I think it's time that we close the door on this chapter of Double B Garage. Until next time.